Hello, gemstone hunter. What if an absolutely ordinary tree, the kind you walk past without paying a second thought, was silently pointing out exactly where emeralds are buried in the ground? Well, it sounds improbable, almost absurd at first glance, but nature loves to hide its secrets in plain sight. Ancient prospectors without maps, sensors, or modern technology learn to read living signs, and one of them grows, breathes, and feeds directly from what is hidden beneath the surface. Few people talk about it, even fewer know how to identify it, and almost no one teaches it, which makes this knowledge rare and powerful. In this video, you will understand why this tree appears in specific soils, how it reacts to the minerals present in the earth, and how nature itself provides clues about hidden emeralds. So before moving on, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, because the more you learn to observe, the more the earth begins to speak to you. And this is just the beginning. Imagine someone walking through a seemingly ordinary green area, smelling the earth still damp from the last rain, hearing the soft crackling of branches underfoot, and touching the firm trunk of a tree without imagining what lies meters below. The wind passes through the leaves as if telling an ancient story, one of those that don't appear in textbooks but survive in nature's own memory. There, everything seems too normal to attract attention, and perhaps that's precisely why most people pass by without a second glance. The soil, dark in some places, lighter in others, holds a silent logic that few have learned to interpret. Nature doesn't shout, it whispers, and only those who slow their gaze hear it. There's an invisible poetry in this encounter between roots and minerals, as if the tree were a living sentinel, marking a special territory without needing signs or warnings. In this scenario, value doesn't shine, doesn't gleam, doesn't attract attention, it waits. And those who learn to feel the environment before measuring it end up realizing that nothing there is out of place. Long before topographic maps, drones, or sophisticated equipment, Humankind already understood that the Earth gave clear signs to those who knew how to observe patiently. Ancient peoples, experienced prospectors, and intuitive explorers read the behavior of plants like one reads an open book, page by page with respect and attention. In ancient mining regions, certain patterns always repeated themselves. Certain trees appeared in the same types of soil, in specific areas, almost as if they were called by what existed beneath them. Curiously, or perhaps not, these same places ended up revealing valuable gems over time. It wasn't luck, nor coincidence, it was environmental reading. While many relied only on force or chance, others learned to trust in silent observation. Nature has always been an ally of those who know how to ask the right questions, even without words. And it is at this point that the story begins to change, because when one understands that nothing grows by chance, the inevitable question arises. What exactly is this tree answering in the soil where it decided to be born? Some trees choose their growing location, not only based on water or sunlight, but also on what is silently dissolved in the soil. Science already knows that certain minerals alter the chemical composition of the earth directly influencing the development of roots, leaves, and even the color of the vegetation. In the case of emerald trees, the geological environment is very specific, rich in elements that not all plants tolerate. Some simply don't survive there, while others adapt better, almost as if that soil were tailor-made for them. This adaptation doesn't happen by chance. It's a direct response to what exists below the surface. The soil talks to the plant all the time, and the plant responds by growing, resisting, and standing out from its surroundings. To the untrained eye, it's just another tree. For those who understand the dialogue of nature, it's a clear sign that something different is happening down there. The turning point happens when you understand that this tree is not the cause, but the effect. It doesn't create the emerald, it doesn't produce the gem, and it doesn't point with signs or arrows. It reacts. It reacts to the soil chemistry, the balance of minerals, the rocky structure that supports its roots. It's almost like a living thermometer adjusted to the environment in which it was planted by nature itself. 
Few people know this because most learn to look for riches by looking only at the ground, never at what grows on it. And that's where the most common mistake lies. The tree isn't there by luck, nor for aesthetics. It's there because it can live where others can't. This detail changes everything because it transforms a simple walk into a profound understanding of the environment. If this is already making sense to you, leave a like now. This helps the channel continue bringing knowledge that almost no one shares. When someone starts observing more closely, they realize that these trees often appear in isolation or in small groups, frequently in soils that seem strange around them. The terrain may be more stony, less fertile for common crops, but perfect for this specific species. Old miners couldn't explain this in scientific terms, but they knew how to recognize the pattern. They compared nearby areas, observed where the vegetation changed, and mentally noted these differences. It wasn't superstition, it was accumulated experience. Today, with more knowledge, it's possible to understand that the tree functions as a biological marker of a mineralized environment. And the more someone trains their eye, the more these signs begin to stand out. If you've seen something similar or know someone who has commented on different trees in mining areas, write here in the comments. This exchange of experiences is pure gold. What's most fascinating is realizing that nature has always provided clues, but demands something in return. Attention. It doesn't reveal its secrets to those who rush by, looking at their cell phones or expecting quick solutions. This tree grows as a living reminder that true knowledge doesn't shout. It repeats itself silently until someone notices. When this is understood, the search for emeralds ceases to be just a treasure hunt and becomes an exercise in reading the natural world. Each root, each leaf, and each growth pattern carries hidden information. And when this understanding clicks, the next inevitable question arises. If the tree indicates the right environment, how exactly can someone use this sign in practice without relying on luck or guesswork? Using a tree as a natural indicator begins, first and foremost, with calm observation and conscious comparison. The first step isn't digging, measuring, or chasing after expensive equipment, but carefully observing the type of tree, the shape of its trunk, the density of its canopy, and most importantly, where it has chosen to grow. Indicator trees often appear in soils that seem out of the ordinary, often stony, with a different color and little vegetation around them. A good practical exercise is to walk through the area and compare. Where does this tree appear most frequently? Does it grow in isolation or in small groups? Is the surrounding soil harder, darker, or drier? Mentally noting, or even writing down in a simple notebook, these differences help strain your eye. Experienced prospectors have been doing this for decades, and not by chance. If you enjoy this type of practical learning, leave a like, because this channel is made for those who prefer to understand before acting. The second point is understanding what each sign indicates in the environment. When a tree thrives in a particular soil, it suggests the presence of specific minerals that favor its development, even if they hinder the growth of other plants. In the case of emeralds, the environment usually involves specific rocks and a mineral composition that alters the soil structure. A simple example, if you observe that a tree grows well in a terrain where the grass is sparse or non-existent, this is already a sign of a differentiated soil. Another important detail is the relief. Slightly elevated areas, gentle slopes, or transitions between rock types are usually more interesting than completely flat terrain. The idea is not to draw quick conclusions, but to cross-reference visual information. The more signs are repeated in the same location, the stronger the natural interpretation becomes. And if something here has already reminded you of a place you know, comment here. Sometimes the answer is closer than it seems. Simple tools make all the difference in this process, and the most curious thing is that none of them need to be sophisticated. Attentive eyes, patience and comparison are the most valuable instruments. Walking through the area at different times, observing how the light hits the ground, noting the humidity, and even the presence of small stones on the surface help to compose the complete picture. Some people like to use basic geological maps of the region or historical mining records to reinforce the analysis, 
and this already puts the observer several steps ahead. The secret is not to rely on a single isolated sign, but on the whole picture. The tree is a clue, not the final answer. And when someone learns this, they stop depending on luck and start acting with discernment. If you haven't been taught this kind of knowledge before, it's worth reinforcing. Like the video and share it, because few people talk about this clearly. Finally, it's important to remember that this natural reading has always been transmitted orally among experienced people, rarely recorded in books or manuals. Therefore, it seems mysterious or inaccessible, when in reality, it only requires practice and respect for the environment. Ancient prospectors observed for years before making decisions, learning from their mistakes and successes. Today, those who dedicate themselves to learning these signs are accessing knowledge that has almost disappeared. The tree doesn't promise easy wealth, but it offers direction. And those who understand direction don't go in circles. When this logic fits together, the next natural step in the journey emerges. Where exactly have these signs already led to real discoveries throughout history? In regions historically known for emeralds in English-speaking countries, certain patterns repeat themselves almost inevitably. In areas of the United States with a history of mining, as well as in parts of Canada and Australia, early explorers noticed that certain trees frequently appeared near mineralized soils. These accounts appear in field diaries, prospecting records, and stories passed down through generations. Experienced miners learned by observing where the vegetation changed its behavior, where the soil seemed rockier, or where only certain species persisted in growing. It wasn't superstition, it was the repetition of results. Years later, geological studies confirmed that many of these locations did indeed present favorable conditions for gem formation. While many looked only at the ground, nature pointed upwards, using leaves and roots as living markers. The tree didn't promise wealth, but it offered direction, and that always made a difference. Similar stories also emerge in African regions colonized by the English, where explorers learned to respect natural signs before any excavation. The pattern was never immediate brilliance, but the silent insistence of the landscape. Where there are emeralds, there is a specific set of geological conditions, and the vegetation responds to this in a way visible to those who know how to interpret them. The symbolic approach is simple. While most seek quick answers, nature works with patience. The emerald does not reveal itself on its own. It leaves clues scattered in the environment, waiting for someone to connect the signs. Isolated trees, unusual growth patterns, and visually distinct soils form a living map drawn over time. When someone understands this, the search ceases to be trial and error and becomes conscious reading. And it is precisely there that the next reflection arises. If nature has always given clues, why have so few learned to see them? How many times has someone experienced something extraordinary without realizing it, simply because it seemed too ordinary at first glance? Life works much like this emerald tree. What is most valuable almost never attracts attention, makes no noise, and doesn't ask for applause. It simply exists, waiting to be recognized by those who have learned to observe. This perception changes everything because it teaches that wealth, opportunity, and knowledge are not always where everyone looks, but where few have the patience to remain. Just as in nature, in personal and professional life, those who learn to read the right signs begin to make better decisions, with less haste and more clarity. It's not about luck, but about trained sensitivity. The tree grows in silence, as do powerful ideas, forgotten talents, and ignored paths. When someone understands this, they begin to see the world with different eyes, perceiving patterns where before they saw chance. And it is precisely this change of perspective that prepares the ground to act differently, consciously, and in alignment. Because observing is the first step before any real transformation. If this content has already begun to change the way you see nature, then this is the moment to be part of something bigger. Write in the comments, 
I read the signs of nature, because when someone declares this, they begin to observe the world with more intention. This channel isn't just about stones or emeralds, it's about learning to perceive what most people ignore. Like the video if you believe that true knowledge should be shared, not hidden. Share it with someone who enjoys hiking, exploration, or simply understanding how life works beyond the obvious. And subscribe to the channel to continue learning about natural signs that indicate hidden riches in the soil and hidden opportunities in life. The more people who awaken their vision, the stronger this community becomes. Because in the end, it's not about finding something. It's about learning to see. So, the next time you see a lone tree in a different location, don't just walk past it, observe it. Nature rarely repeats signs without reason. And if you want to continue training that observation, the next video appearing on the screen now is essential. It's called, These River Stones Look Ordinary, until you break them open and see what's inside. And it will show you how the obvious often hides something extraordinary. Click on it now and continue this journey, because those who learn to see beyond the surface never look at the world the same way again. See you later, Gemstone Hunter.